But the Lord is with us like a fearsome warrior. Therefore, our persecutors will stumble and will not prevail. Since they have not succeeded, they will be utterly put to shame with an everlasting disgrace that will never be forgotten. God bless you, gifted family, and thank you for staying with us. Our goal is to serve you by consistently feeding you with faith until you have no choice but to win. God's word is the reason we are all here. So let's go and get with Pastor Kwame. This is your girl, Stephanie. Praise be to God, we give God the glory and honor and praise. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I want to appreciate those who join us and this is a gift, the platform. We just share the word of God. We we share faith. We share hope together. Amen. So I hope you stick around and you enjoy our daily podcast. Amen. Amen. Um, we staying safe, but we are not just physically staying home we are also staying in the hand of god that is our preservation and we 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 are convinced that the eye of the lord is on us and we are not children of god for no reason amen the bible says the lord knows his own and i pray that god will protect you i pray that god will continue to strengthen you and and keep doing something good in your life so that when the storm is over you will lift up a white handkerchief to give thanks to god who has been good unto you and your house may you be preserved amen and amen i thank god for your life so we we are discussing uh, 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 a subject for the week which is uh, finding the, your will in god's will finding your will in god's will and today's um subject is a little bit difficult to listen but i hope that you'll be able to engage with me because i'm going to cut very close to you and deal with some reality on the ground all right so let me get to my verse and then we will exegete the test and now we'll end up talking to each other on the subject so my assignment is located in second peter chapter one the verse number three apostle peter says now his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness so we are looking at the fact that um when we come to christ there isn't anything which is left outside your 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 grab your grabs you can grab a lot you can have unlimited blessings and the word all things appears a lot in the new covenant you remember uh, when paul says now i can do all things to christ remember and uh, god shall supply all so the word all begins to appear mostly in our covenant now um i'm dealing with today the the issue which is a very private one and a very um how might i put difficult to share but i'm going to start with a few stories so you'll be able to relate um i have a very close person of mine and uh, she went through a situation where god brought her to a place of an open door a place on an open door and she realized that that opportunity is going to change her life for good but as she stands by the open door somehow the door closed again on her and for the rest of her life she's asking herself one did i tr- trust god less that is why i couldn't enter the door and that question didn't bother me a lot the next question was the one that bothered me the next question was that for the rest of her life she's imagining herself in the door so that means that she's dealing with secret regret because every time she comes to herself she's asking herself what if i was in there what kind of life would that be and so there is this constant sense of um where i am it's not really or in other words no matter how happy she is now she's can't be fully happy because she's asking herself what would that life also be if i had entered the door that shut on me i want to really get real with you today because i'm dealing with people who 
I am saying everything is God's will, but you know that you've come to a place where you are living your settled life, not your preferred life. Somehow, unfortunately, you've entered the door. For this lady in question, the door closed. She couldn't enter. But for some of you, you've entered the door and you know that this is not the will of God for me. This marriage is not. Pastor, I don't care what you preach. This marriage is not God's will. I am miserable. And some of you are also listening to me and it's like you can't even find any door. The way you imagine your life and where you are now, you are hitting your age like nobody's business and absolutely nothing seems to be changing for you. And so when somebody starts a podcast and talk about everything is God's will, you want to tell me to slow down because... God spoke to me. I shouldn't go that way. And I went and everything went bad. So you can't tell me that everything that I do is still God's will. So I'm speaking to people that are in a place where you kind of feel you've blown it. And you are living just, you have settled with the person. It's not really the, you know. So there is the life you wanted and the life you have now. And that is the people I want to talk to. The life you wanted. And for some of you, it's not even the life you wanted. The life you once had and you've lost. So I'm dealing with real people today. I'm dealing with real stuff today. So um, I want us to talk that we will begin to bring understanding. God has sent me to tell you three quick things. But I want you to understand who I'm speaking to today. I'm talking to people who are not where they want to be in life. I'm talking to people who are in a place where they missed it. They missed it. They, they heard clearly that this is not your man. They, they, it's like, and some of you, you didn't hear, but you just realized that this is a wrong marriage, period. You just realized that this is a wrong job. You just realized that this decision, bringing this person to my life was wrong. And if they have ruined my everything. You know, and and that is where I'm coming from today, and I want us to talk. And so, uh, I mean, Peter is talking about uh, when we come to Christ, God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So, how do I take that verse and apply it to my challenge? Apply it to uh, my situation? Apply it to where I am? When uh, in my mind, I could have been happier. In my mind, I could have been better. And what if what what do I do after I let the egg drop? And I don't have. It's like I'm eating my food without the egg because it's it, you know that's kind of where you are. You eating your food without the egg. You are you you are better than where you are. You know, and life and circumstance has really messed you up. You know, you are dealing with a sickness you can't even imagine why am i sick at this moment why am i this miserable you know and you try to figure out what's going on i want to talk to you today amen so uh god has sent me to talk to you concerning his will for your life the lord says his will for your life is this number one wherever life takes you God is going to be with you. Amen. Wherever life takes you, God is going to be with you. So the person I spoke about, I keep telling her, so whether you have gone through the door, God was going to be with you on that side. And whether you couldn't go through the door, God is with you on the other side of the door. So the point is that wherever a child of God goes, God will be with you. When you marry the wrong person, God will be with you with that wrong guy. When you marry the right person, God will be with you with that right guy. When you get the wrong job, God will be with you with that wrong job. When you get So the point is that God is going to be with you in every situation. When they put you in the pit, God is going to be with you. When they put you in the palace, God is going to be with you. When they put you in the lions, then God is going to be with you. When there's no corona, God will be with you. When there's corona, God will be with you. So the first thing God sent me to tell you is that no matter where life has placed you, God is going to be with you. 
and that is the first thing i want you to know your condition does not look like the one you wanted you've made a wrong choice you heard god clearly and you disobeyed you let your eyes become bigger than god's voice in your life and you are in a place where you know that this is not it i deserve better i could have been a better place but god says wherever you could and couldn't be one thing is for sure he is going to be with you wherever life throws you amen and so i want you to agree and let's agree together that whether you are in your good job whether you are in your preferred financial condition whether you are in a divorce condition whether you are in a married condition one thing is for sh- for, for shizzle which is god is with you amen I, I, and, and, and i and i think you have to appreciate the, the gravity of what i'm saying because where god is is where you ought to be that is why when jesus was placed in the manger the manger became the blessing place because where god is is where the will of god is so because god is with you wherever you are you are in his will amen now it's not easy to just swallow that because it hurts when you consider where you are the lord says tell my people i am with them secondly uh, i want to bring you a word of hope that because god is with you wherever life throws you you will be fruitful amen because god is with you wherever life puts you you will be fruitful amen and the, the reason i'm teaching about knowing your will in god's will is a fact that um life is very complex and it doesn't even have um, logic to it uh, you can stay faithful all you want and when it's time for you to be married um, you end up with an unfaithful guy and you can also sleep around all you want and end up with a good christian brother a life does not have a pattern to what happens so we can really put a, our finger on how life works uh, so things become very challenging but at the end of the day god is with you therefore whatever comes your way god will make a way and i want you to know that the second thing god want me to tell you is that because he is with you we are going to be fruitful and the reason you must accept the fact that you're going to be fruitful is because it is god who decides fruitfulness not life and so the person example again the person couldn't enter the door but god will prosper you whether you went through the door or not god will prosper you whether you were in a right marriage or not god will pro- when i say prosper you what i mean is that you will not lack fruitfulness praise god and 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 i know people who are in a happy marriage and they are not fruitful i know people who are in a happy marriage and they have 10 kids so somehow god can make you fruitful in the situation that you are in but when i say fruitfulness i don't mean like maybe financial fruitfulness but i want you to allow god to make you fruitful in the condition you are in and that's a difficult part because you think that you you belong to the door that was open you're supposed to go in there and 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 you and it shut in your face so you have mentally kind of psych your mind to think that your true fruitfulness is inside the door inside the the room where the door is and you couldn't enter but god can prosper you regardless of where you are amen and so you ought to understand that with god all things are possible so long as you think the person you are married to is not good god cannot prosper the marriage so long as you think that this condition of your ministry is not good god cannot prosper it you know the the beauty of god is that he can prosper anything hallelujah and i and and i'm not naive there are some bad things and there are some good things 
You don't have to be a prophet to know that a bad marriage is a bad marriage. And a good marriage is a good marriage. A bad health condition is a bad health condition. A good health condition is a good health condition. A bad financial place is a bad financial place. So that is just clear. You know, but I'm saying that when you find yourself in a bad condition, God is with you. And because God is with you, that same bad condition, when you begin to understand that God is with me. Now, let me say this. That's for free. This is not part of my point. But every time you find yourself in a bad condition, you attract the hand of God. When you find yourself in a good condition, you attract the voice of God. Let me say it again. When you find yourself in a bad marriage, You attract the hand of God. When you find yourself in a good marriage, you attract the voice of God. God is only able to work with bad things. That is why he destroyed the earth before he created it. God is only able to work with bad things. Jesus came and said, I came for the sick. So only bad, sick people are useful to me and so when life gives you something bad you attract the hand of god when life gives you something good you attract the voice of god because when life gives you good things and you don't hear god you will serve and worship that good thing in your life and so it's not a bad thing to be in a bad condition if you were a covenant child that is just for free. Now, let me get back to my third point and pray. And so God says, number one, tell them I am with them. And number two, because I'm with them, they'll be fruitful in the wilderness. They'll be fruitful in their bad marriage. They'll be fruitful in their bad finances. They'll be fruitful in their um, their bad plan that they didn't pan out. You wanted to be married by now. You wanted to be here by now and there by now. When I, when I turned 40, I was like, oh my, I thought I would be richer than this. But whatever the case is, God is able to prosper you where you find yourself. Now, check this out. The last thing God said, which I want you to pay close attention, is the fact that the reason you are where you are right now is not because of you, but because there is something that's going to happen to you that is better that you are you are where you are now. Let me say it again. The reason you are where you are, which you think you have lost it, you have you have blown it, you could have been better, you could have been like somebody else who is doing well, you could have been married also with kids, you could have been having your business and all of that. So the reason you are maybe not happy with where you are now is because there's something else that's about to happen to you that is why God is okay with where you are. Let me give you a very kind of strange example. Um, some of you, you have to thank God for where you are because he is a wiser God. There's something that is going to happen that, and I know a particular person that when they enter through the door that they were happy about, they ended up going through the most miserable aftermath of their blessings. You understand? There is something, you know, let me say it like this. For some of us, this is a hard one to swallow. For some of us, the place of protection, hear me, the place of divine protection you enjoy is because of your financial condition that has limited your ability to be arrogant. <laughs> Let me say it again. The place of divine protection that you are enjoying, that you will not die and others will die in this corona, is because of your financial limitation that has humbled you enough to enter that door of protection. That means that had you opened a bigger door, your arrogance would have killed you in the corona season. Are you hearing me? So, there are things you enjoy because you are poor. (laughs) There are things you enjoy because you are meek. There are things so that if God had blessed you with this bountiful marriage you wanted, you would have died earlier because it will not bring you to a level of prayerfulness that can, oh Jesus, that can preserve you in times like this. Are you hearing me? And so the reason you are not as blessed as you want to and there's enough struggle in your life is because other things depend on your struggle 
to bring you divine protection. It is your simplicity that has brought you this far. But if the bigger door had opened, you wouldn't have been as simple as you are now. And that would have caused you to lose other things. I know a woman that left the marriage because she was financially able. You know what I'm saying? And, and, And when she left the marriage, she left a different problem altogether. And now, so are you hearing me today? So wherever you are, there are other things that heaven gives you because of your condition. And so you have to always thank God that no matter where I find myself, God is with me and I'll be fruitful in that location. And it is the location I am at that is giving me certain privileges should I have left that location. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you today because you are too wise for us. I bless you and I give you glory. I place everyone under the sound of my voice in your care. You are a good shepherd. And wherever we find ourselves, if you are with us, we are cool. In Jesus' name, amen.